This episode is brought to you by CuriosityStream, a subscription streaming service with over 2,400 documentaries and nonfiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers. Sign up using the link and promo code below to start a one-month trial absolutely free. Throughout human history, we've worked to find more and more efficient ways to destroy enemy nations or enhance our own standing in the world. Historically, the means of waging war against foreign adversaries have been less than stealthy. Swords, cannons, and guns require a human operator. We can tell where missiles are launched. Fighter jets and warships are easily identified. But within the last few decades, weapons of war have become more insidious. We still have, and use, the big, flashy, conventional weapons to which we're so accustomed. But the aggressive nations of the world have another trick up their sleeve which is much harder to trace. The use of non-traditional, high-tech weapons whose goal is to cripple infrastructure, economies, and militaries without ever firing a bullet. There are many different versions of these non-traditional weapons, but interestingly, the one with perhaps the most destructive potential is given very little attention. In a world run entirely by electricity and electronics, an electromagnetic pulse could bring any nation to its knees within hours. An electromagnetic pulse, or EMP, is a short, intense burst of energy that can originate from a number of natural sources, including lightning strikes and solar storms. But more importantly, it can also be weaponized. A missile carrying an EMP device, while not nearly as deadly as a nuclear weapon at the moment of detonation, could nonetheless cause much more damage over the course of the following days, weeks, and months. A 2018 report by the LeMay Center paints a startling picture of the potential fallout from an EMP attack. The United States is home to 99 nuclear reactors, which, believe it or not, are not adequately prepared for a significant electromagnetic surge. In the aftermath of an EMP attack, those 99 reactors would melt down within days, and potentially in under 16 hours without electricity to power the cooling systems. These meltdowns could lead to catastrophic explosions at worst and significant radiation leaks in even the best case scenario. The report estimates that mass reactor meltdown would displace over 4 million people as clouds of radiation spread from the facilities. Meanwhile, in the air, moments after the EMP detonates, the majority of commercial and military aircraft alike will lose control of critical systems. Even planes designed to carry large numbers of people are allowed to operate without certainty of their resilience in the face of electromagnetic interference. This would lead to significant loss of life, as most of the planes within range of the EMP attack would crash. Back on the ground, GPS, cell phones, computers, and most electronics will have stopped working. Lights will be out across much of the country, as electrical grids fail and cut power to tens of millions of people. It's predicted that civil unrest would start within hours of the event, as indicated by past blackouts such as the New York City blackout in 1977, during which mass looting began within 8 hours, and within 24 hours, arsonists had caused more than 3,000 fires. Military and government intelligence bases would be cut off from communications with each other and likely the outside world, making identification of the attacker and retaliation nearly impossible. And this is all within the first hours to days of the event. The more critical concern, besides evacuation from irradiated areas, is the degradation of life-supporting infrastructure across the country. Water treatment facilities would shut down. Heating and air conditioning would stop functioning. Banks will go offline, fresh water will become scarce, the majority of cars with electric starters will refuse to start. If it's winter, tens of thousands will die in the northeast without adequate protection from the cold. If it's summer, those most susceptible to the heat, such as the old or very young, will die in the south. Repairs to the most critical systems could take up to 18 months, during which time the economy will have ground to a halt, hospitals will be unable to treat those who can even get there, millions will die of sickness from tainted water, or heat stroke, or hypothermia, or civil unrest. And all of this will have happened while the aggressor sits back and watches. To make matters worse, even if we did harden our defenses against electromagnetic interference, an EMP could be delivered in ways that make it very difficult to determine the attacker. A small-scale attack on an important city, like New York, could be carried out by a single person with a large backpack or piece of luggage. More alarmingly, the report details certain missiles capable of being fired from inobtrusive launch sites, such as a modified shipping container. If several of these missiles were loaded onto a freighter bound for the US, they could be launched from within our own territory, giving us no time to react and making it significantly more difficult to determine the perpetrator. Of course, for a nation or rogue group to perpetrate such an attack is nearly unthinkable, the damage would be indiscriminate and affect millions of innocent civilians. Is that a guarantee that it would never happen? No, not by a long shot. But it's such a drastic, overwhelmingly egregious type of attack that it's less likely than other unconventional tactics. That being said, there's one foreign aggressor that wouldn't think twice about shutting off the power anywhere in the world. In fact, it wouldn't think at all. 
Perhaps the most likely candidate for causing a large-scale EMP event is the sun. Every so often, our massive, violent ball of plasma shoots off what's called a coronal mass ejection, or CME, which is basically the solar equivalent of an EMP. On July 23, 2012, we witnessed one of the largest CMEs ever recorded, and it missed us by a tiny margin. Just nine days difference in the sun's rotation, and we would have been blasted back to the Stone Age. Okay, not really, but a CME of that size would have had disastrous effects on the world's technology and development. It's estimated that the damage to the US alone would have cost between $600 billion and $2.6 trillion, and it would have taken 4 to 10 years to recover. CMEs aren't that uncommon, and the potential for an EMP attack from Earth is also always a possibility. It's one of those things that doesn't get much press, but that we should probably talk about in the near future. After all, how are you going to watch my videos when the world's computers are fried? If you'd like to learn more about the crazy effects of CMEs while you still can, I highly recommend you check out the documentary Our Violent Sun on CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is the world's first streaming service for people like us, people on a lifelong quest to learn and understand. They've got over 2,400 documentaries from some of the best filmmakers in the game, and they've got a bunch of material on space, like Our Violent Sun. Their catalog also includes content on science, nature, astronomy, technology, and lifestyle. Unlimited access starts at just $2.99 a month, and as a special offer just for you guys, you can get one month absolutely free by following the link below and using the code SECONDTHOUGHT during signup. CuriosityStream is available on all sorts of platforms, including the web app, Roku, Android, Xbox One, Smart TVs, iOS, Chromecast, Amazon Fire, Kindle, and Apple TV. So wherever you are, you'll always have access to great, interesting content. Give CuriosityStream a shot and sign up for your one-month free trial by visiting curiositystream.com secondthought and using the code secondthought.